Now that we have finally understood perfectly well why GBCG is so good and why exactly it is revenue maximizing, it's all perfectly clear now. Uh, we will wrap up our discussion of the efficient mechanisms, but it's those, those that implement the efficient allocation with just one more mechanism. First question is, well, why do we need one more? We already have GBCG and it's so nice and beautiful. It is dominant strategy set compatible, it's interim IR, it's revenue maximizing. But it does not cover all use cases that you might have. Sometimes even the GVCG is not good enough. Because even though it maximizes revenue, it, it, it may not be enough. It may still run a deficit. So that the designer will have to put money into the mechanism on average at least. Sometimes it's not good enough. And sometimes we may not really need IR. And the example again is government. If the government is designing uh, some new tax reform or again planning public projects, then the government does not really need IR to ensure that everybody pays taxes because the government can use force to ensure that everybody pays taxes. You know, fine people, put people in jail, and so on. Use non-monetary incentives, so to say, to ensure uh, participation. And AGV mechanism is exactly the mechanism to use in that case. As we will see, it will be exactly budget balanced, so it will not require any external investment. But its downside is that it might not be individually rational. And AGV stands for the French surname that I typically cannot pronounce, but I'll try. Uh, Hamon and Gérard Vrai. And I think they proposed it in around 79, so a few years after BCG was out. So I guess they also had to really justify why we need another mechanism after BCG. Uh, but this mechanism is given as false. Obviously, we stick with the efficient allocation rule, K star, where Still looking at that. We are working within the realm of quasi-linear setting now, just as, we did, just as we did with the VCG mechanism, except for that revenue part with the GVCG. And we just need to define the transfers, right, to finish the description of the mechanism. And we do it into steps. But first we define these TI tildes, which are given by the expectation of the, uh, the real utilities of all players except for I, including the designer, from the efficient allocation. So this is kind of the gross term. This is the expectation of the gross term, if you wish. So this term measures the expected externality that player I imposes on everybody else. So not on the absolute scale, but it's measure of welfare of all other agents. And if player I tries to pull the blanket in his own uh, side, this will probably decrease welfare of all other agents. So the idea is that the mech the, we would want player I to pay for that. This was the initial idea with gross transfers. This, was, this is still the idea here, except we are no longer looking at dominant strategy instead of compatible mechanism. We are actually making use of Bayesian implementation concept that you learn on your own. So this is the expected externality. And then the way that we construct the actual transfers, the TI AGV, I guess it's a function of theta, a uh, function of theta i. Sorry, both of these are functions of theta i. Is as follows. So we take this expected externality, and the agent has to pay that. And this is, again, exactly the Groves logic. So this is the term that ensures incentive compatibility. But now we also have this first term that is kind of the, the, the HI of theta minus i. So this is the term that does not depend on player i's report, but this is that counterbalance, like the Clark transfer from BCG. And here, this counterbalance is given by the sum 
of everybody else's expected externalities and an equal share of that. So, in a sense, I am paying my expected externalities to the mechanism, and the mechanism then redistributes my payment to the mechanism equally among all other agents, all other players in the mechanism. And vice versa, if the mechanism has to pay me, this payment, this average payment that the mechanism expects to pay me, is withdrawn from all other agents. So this is the term that will give us the budget balance. And the actual statement of AGV properties, so this is called the AGV mechanism, or the expected externality mechanism as well. And uh, the properties of it are as follows. In a quasi-linear setting, AGV mechanism is efficient, just as usual, by construction, because we are taking the efficient allocation rule. It is, with, it is it will be Bayesian incentive compatible, and it will be exposed exactly budget balanced. So it will uh, it will run at exactly zero revenue in all realizations of the of the world or any realizations of the type profiles. Now we know that it's efficient, but we need to prove the two other things. So let's try to do that really quickly. We will start by showing that it's budget balanced, because it's the easy part. So proof, part one, budget balance. Our budget is the sum of all other players' contributions. So just the sum of these TIs. And one of the things I forgot to mention, something that I actually thought quite a bit during the break. You have to be really careful about the indices here. So what we did before is we took the designer's player zero and said that the designer can have some real utilities, right? So in this mechanism, in principle, you can say that the designer also has some T tilde, some expected externality on everybody else. But the designer does not pay anything to the mechanism. The designer is the mechanism. So when we are calculating, when we are redistributing players' transfers, we are not including the designer. So in definition of T tilde, our sum over players is over all j's except for i, and j's are from 0 to m, so including the designer. When we are redistributing the payoffs, our sum is for over all j's except for i from 1 to m. So here we are excluding the designer. I wanted to make that really, really clear. So x post, I guess you can call it a budget, since we're calling it budget balance, but x post revenue is given by the sum over i from 1 to m of ti of theta. And in our, in our mechanism, the sum of these AGV transfers is given by what? So we can easily sum the latter parts. We will have just one sum over i from 1 to n of ti tildes theta i. But this first part is a little bit annoying. So 1 over n minus 1 is fine. But then we have a sum of sums. So we sum over all players i. And we, the summons are the sums over all players except for i. So let's just try to count how many of each tj will be in this mechanism. 
let's maybe try to draw it, uh, a, a table. A table. Yeah, let's make it here. So player right, player right. One, two, three, four, five. So on one, two, three, four, five. And let's assign the weight that TI AGV assigns to TI til TJ tilde. Okay. So this will be J's. So t to T tilde of any given player. For example. Transfer of player one assigns weight minus one to t tilde one. So we will say that this is minus one. And all of the diagonal will be minus one as well. Player two's transfer will assign weight minus one to t tilde one, and so on. What does player one's transfer, AGV, what is the weight that it assigns to? T tilde 2. It will be in this sum. So it's 1 over n minus 1. And all other weights except for the, the except for the diagonal will be 1 over n minus 1 minus 1. So now what we want to do is we want to just sum all weights over columns. So we want to figure out how many t tilde ones there will be in this final revenue, how many t tilde twos, how many t tilde threes, and so on. And so here we have one minus one, just in this sum. And here we have one over n minus one, another one, another one n minus 1 terms equal to n minus 1. So we will have n minus 1 times n minus 1 times t i tilde of theta i for every layer i. And so you can see that in the end this will be exactly 0. I guess this summation is redundant if you understand this table. If you do not understand what I did here, then just sum all of these things manually. Now, let us talk about why exactly this mechanism is incentive compatible. How do we prove incentive compatibility? We write out the expected utility of a given player of a given type. And we see what could have happened if this player reported some other type. So misreported. And we want to show that it's never profitable to misreport your own type. So let's just write it out. Uh, if I report some type theta hat i, given true type. I. The expectation of our other player's types of utility of player i. So what will this expectation be? Again, player i's utility in the quasi-linear setting that we are working in is what? V, the function of allocation and own type, minus the transfer. If we take the expectation, we get expectations. Easy as that. So expectation over theta minus i of vi of k star of theta i hat, the report of player i, theta minus i, given the true type theta i, I will write one big expectation everywhere, minus ti of, again, theta i hat, theta minus i. So all of these expectations are actually conditional on theta i. 
because now we are no longer assuming the types are independently distributed. But I will just omit this condition because now that I've written it, now that I've written it twice, you definitely remember that it's here. So this is our expected utility, and if we plug in the EGV transfers, what will we get? So we will get expectation over other players types of VI of k star theta hat i theta minus i theta i. Let's take this term first. So minus minus it will be plus t tilde i, and then we'll have minus this sum minus one over n minus one of the sum of j not equal to i of t till the j of theta g. Okay, that's it. So at this line I just plugged in the t tilde i. t tilde i does not depend on theta minus i. So it's just a constant. We can take it out of the expectation. But if we then plug in the actual description of t tilde i, we get that it itself is an expectation over other players' types of, I did not leave myself enough space here, of the sum of j not equal to i, here again, j from 0 to n, of the j k star theta i hat theta minus i theta j, and this is a conditional expectation that I'm not writing. Cool. And you can see that if we then merge these two expectations together, we get the expectation of the social welfare. So we get the expectation over theta minus i of the sum over all players i from j from 0 to n, including player i, of vj k star theta hat i theta minus i theta g. That's it. Minus the function. Say it? Yeah, minus the one over n. Minus, of, yeah, I was about to write that. Minus this term. And as we said, it does not depend on. Okay, here I actually should have had expectation as well. This sum does depend on other players' types. Obviously. Theta g here. But the point now is that this last term, this expectation, does not depend on theta i. So it is, we can, as usual, denote it as some hi of theta minus constant hi. It does not depend on any types. OK, this was a long road to calculate the expected utility of player i who reports type theta i hat while being actually type theta i. So what we want to show is that this expected utility is maximized by the true report. So reporting theta i is optimal, maximizes this expression. And this again, just like before, just like in the case of VCG, in case of gross transfers, it follows from the fact that this is the uh, welfare maximizing allocation case stuff. I will not write it all, but I will write that since k star maximizes the sum of vj of k and theta, reporting true type will again implement the efficient allocation, the one that maximizes the sum. Reporting any other type will lead to some other k possibly that will make this expression lower. So by misreporting, the player can only distort social choice away from the efficient allocation, so it will not be good. So since k star maximizes this sum, uh, truthful reporting is optimal. I will just write that much. And this completes the proof. So we have shown that AGV 
is efficient. Again, trivially, it's based on safety compatible. It's exposed exactly budget balanced. So if this is your kind of thing, then you should use AGV. Cool? Cool. And this concludes our investigation of the efficient mechanisms of those that support or implement the efficient allocation in domain strategies or in Bayesian Nash equilibrium. I realized just now that I forgot to absolutely do one thing that I really wanted to do. Uh, when we were talking about revenues and budget balance mechanisms earlier today, or last week, I, I found a result in burgers that I think is really cool and really quick to state. So I'll just state it right now. No proof, I promise. It says that if a mechanism is Bayesian incentive compatible and ex ante budget balanced, then there exists a mechanism Uh, that is base incentive compatible and exposed budget balanced. It is cool, right? It means that in Bayesian settings, there is really no distinction between ex ante and exposed budget balance. And if your mechanism does not run a deficit on average, then you can ensure that it does not run a deficit ever. And this is a proposition in Burgers uh, 3.6, I think. Uh, also restated as 6.3, something like that. It's in the slides. So that's really cool. And yeah, it's trivial that any exposed budget balance mechanism is also exactly budget balance. 